Okay, it's 7 o'clock, and I'm going to call the meeting to order of the Common Council of the City of Plateau. It's Tuesday, June the 14th, and it is 7 o'clock, and we are in the Council Chambers. We'll start with roll call, Jan. Don Francis? Here. Tom Nall? Here. Ken Killian? Here. Eileen Nichols has been excused. Amy Seaboth Wilson? Here. Catherine Burke? Here. And Barbara Doss? Here. The first thing on our agenda tonight, agenda tonight is consideration of the consent calendar. Uh, the following items may be approved on a single motion and vote due to their routine nature. We have council minutes from uh, May 24th, the special meeting, and from May 24th, the regular meeting, payment of bills. We have the financial report for May, appointments to boards and commissions. And tonight, on behalf of President Nichols, I'm making the following appointments to the Parks, Forestry, and Recreation Board, Jamie Keefe and Molly Zolke, and to the Roundtree Gallery Board, Cindy Shave. Uh, licenses, there's a series of temporary Class B licenses to serve uh, fermented malt beverages on July 4th in Legion Park to the JCs, some one-year and two-year operator licenses, a junk dealer license, taxi driver license, uh, our annual uh, liquor license renewals, and then uh, the 4th of July fireworks permit. Do I hear a motion or? Do you approve the consent calendar? We have a motion. And a second. And a second, um, Councilor Killian and Councilor Seabooth Wilson to approve the consent calendar. We'll vote. Francis? Yes. No? Yes. Killian? Yes. Seabooth Wilson? Yes. Burke? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item on our agenda are citizens' comments, observations, and petitions, if any. And I actually have two. One actually relates to an item on the agenda. And generally speaking, we allow the person who hasn't, if there's an item on the agenda, to wait until that point, if that's okay with you, Mr. Anderson. Okay, then the one person I have under citizens' comments, observations, and petitions is Arlene Sis with the Stone Cottage. Hello, um, Arlene Sis, 130 North Hickory Street, and I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of the Stone Cottage. We have an event coming up on July 25th, and we'd like to let everybody know we've got some new things coming along. Some of them I don't quite know how to pronounce, so just go along with me. One of the things that we're going to be doing this time, especially for kids and older kids, is the jumpy things that kids can get in there. We have two of them. So I don't know, I think there's another name after that. That's what the kids at school keep saying and I go, just jumpy, right? And they say, yeah. So anyway, we have that. We are going to have, um, and the other thing is that we're changing something this year. We're going to be on a Saturday, not on a Sunday. We're gonna try to see if having things on a Saturday might bring more people in. So that's one of the things. The other thing that we're changing also a little bit is that we're gonna talk about the Stone Cottage, but we're gonna say after it, um, uh, board, I mean, um, built for a veteran of an American revolutionary gentleman. Because we think people, whoop, I don't know, okay. Oh, but we think that people need to know how important this is. I tell people all around the world, this is the only one like it because there's not. And so to have somebody who uh, is building a house um, that is 10 years older than Wisconsin is a history, we need to start really getting that that word out. We have things for students and adults to either, um, they can come and sell things at the Stone Cottage, we're gonna have games, we're gonna have a lot of neat things and we think this is gonna be a very exciting year for the Stone Cottage. So um, I hope we can get a lot of people to come out. Um, we're gonna do our other three things and I'll, unfortunately I'll be here for that again too. <laughs> All right, so this is July 23rd? No, I'm sorry, did I say? I meant June, oh. June twenty, June twenty fifth. I I may have said that because I'm kind of thinking about all these numbers that are going through my little brain. So anyway, uh, does anybody have any uh, questions or anything? And of course, we will have tours of the Stone Cottage. Okay, so Saturday, Saturday June it's a 25th. Saturday this year. Okay. And
and the time is? Oh, I uh, thank you. Um, it, um, nine. 12, uh, 12, uh, 1 o'clock to five, 4 o'clock. And so, and you know, people think it gets very hot, not around the stone cottage because there's so many trees. So if it's mm -hmm. if it's burning hot, you can still come and really enjoy yourself. I do. I go up there sometimes on my own just to do things, and it is always wonderful. So thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. And that's the only person I've had uh, <coughs> registered to speak under this item. So we'll go on to reports from uh, board and commission meeting minutes. Uh, Water and Sewer Commission, Killian Seabooth or? No addition. No, no addition. I wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> Museum board. I wasn't at that. I, I wasn't yet appointed, so no. Well, or I was, but I missed it because I'm in my maternity. Okay. I would just remind people in terms of the museum that uh, Heritage Days will be celebrated July 4th. So if you're going to be in town, make sure that you uh, take advantage of that day at the museum. I'm sure we'll touch that again at the end of the month. Uh, those were the only reports in the packet, although at this point in time, even though the airport commission isn't noted, I would make a note that tomorrow is the airport terminal upgrade grand opening uh, at 3 in the afternoon. Uh, four o'clock is actually the program, and uh, I would just say that sometimes at airports, ribbon cuttings can be interesting experiences. So you might not see a scissors, you might see something else cutting the ribbon. So it might be worth your time to come to the airport tomorrow afternoon uh, to see the upgrades that were done to the terminal. Program at four? programs at four and there are tours before and after and uh, the lunch bus which was recently f uh, featured on TV uh, Wisconsin foodie I think will be on hand too so good day to come on out to the airport other reports in the packet the city attorney's itemized report the water and sewer financial report the airport financial report and department progress reports anybody with any uh, comments or questions on any of those all right then let's move into the action section of our agenda and the action section has one item the Timmerman mortgage satisfaction um, Karen, you want to take that? I can speak to this briefly, and I'll, I'll just maybe make a quick announcement if you notice a little screen going on around here. We're actually monitoring the weather. We do have a report that there's potentially some severe weather 30 to 60 minutes out of our area, so, so we're just keeping tabs so on I'm that. Rushing along. Um, with respect to uh, the Timmerman Supply, they've been in our industrial park since April of 2013, and they've actually met their mortgage requirements with respect to our formula in terms of the value of their building and the number of employees that they have, and they're requesting that the city acknowledge um, that that mortgage is satisfied. The original resolution had a slightly different formula in, in terms of number of employees, um, they actually reached the formula in a different way, but they did reach the formula and our requirements. Okay, so uh, any questions or any motions? I make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute the mortgage satisfaction of Timmerman Supply. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to authorize the mortgage satisfaction of Timmerman Supply. We'll vote. Francis? Yes. No? Yes. Killian? Yes. See both Wilson? Yes. Burke? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Those were, that's the only action item on our agenda. We have uh, four things on our information and discussion. So the first of those is the planned unit development, SIP for the St. Augustine redevelopment project. And uh, Howard will uh, stand in or sit in or speak in, whatever. <laughs> He will, uh, he will uh, update us on this as Joe is unable to attend tonight. So go ahead, Howard. Thank you. Um, this is the second step in, in a multiple step process. The first part was the general development plan approved at the April 26th meeting. This general development plan established the land uses, the permissible densities, the general land plan, general building design, and other general plan details and it was approved subject to the following. 
uh, additional details on the parking arrangements, additional steps to reduce the need for vehicles by tenants. The project should utilize building materials and building design that is higher than standard quality and that a negotiated payment in lieu of taxes or pilot agreement uh, be uh, established in the event that the property is determined to be tax exempt. Um, so now the applicant is applying for approval of the second step, the specific implementation plan or SIP, which provides more information and details, uh, specific design and materials, landscaping, final grading, and other details. Um, staff recommends approval with uh, items A through G on here. Um, the plan commission uh, re uh, considered this at their uh, June 6th meeting and they recommended approval on a four to three vote uh, for items A through G is listed on this uh, uh, staff note plus they uh, added a condition that uh, is kind of separate from this but in, in uh, but in a similar vein um, item H if you will is that they request that the city look at and review uh, overnight parking uh, in on the uh, nearby streets to this project uh, because they're concerned that some of these potential renters instead of parking in the St. Mary's lot far away they would uh, fill up the on-street parking spaces nearby Questions from council? Yeah, I'm just trying to find um, the items A through G. Which page uh, are they yeah, on? Yeah. It's on the that. staff note on the front. It's the very first page. I read this whole thing. Right here, A through G. Oh, those there. I thought there was one added as far as um, landscaping. Was there? No, um, oh, okay. the, only, the only thing that was added was the one I explained about the uh, parking on the street. Um, item E, in terms of the uh, staff recommendations, does address landscaping with respect to uh, the additional parking at St. Mary's. And were you talking about landscaping at the site on Hickory and Pine or Hick landscaping? Hickory and Pine. Hickory and Pine. Okay, and there is no uh, mention of additional landscaping for Hickory and Pine, and I wasn't at the meeting to. There is additional landscaping and screening for the expanded parking area on the St. Yes, Mary's yes, property. Yes, yes, I have that. In the proposed plan, I believe there was uh, landscaping and and uh, um, screenings in their original proposal. The developer will be here at the next council meeting, and we can ask them to share their proposed landscaping plans for the main site. Okay, uh, if that um, would be helpful. Would you ask them specific to specifically address that? Yes. So that we'll okay. Um. Pertinent question, how about uh, storm water management for the um, dorm unit, housing unit? Since they'll be adding a lot of roof area, um, is that coming up tonight as far as how that's gonna be handled when you look at this, this work session? Has anything been discussed with the um, diocese or with the applicant as far as uh, storm water management runoff? from that uh, project because across the street is the parking lot and the parking lot is using some areas there for water infiltration. So is anything special gonna be done as far as all the stormwater coming off of this project? Um, the, uh, um, we do not have any, uh, any requirements currently for a development of this size. That's one of the items that we can talk about a little bit later. Uh, I believe that they have uh, some, um, some uh, uh, 
infiltration and other uh, stormwater uh, uh, facilities that they're proposing in here. Okay, um, let's have them specifically address sure. stormwater also then when they make their presentation at the next council meeting. I share your concern, Ken, with the runoff. Any other questions that people would want specifically? Did they already, I'm sorry if I missed this, do they actually have the parking agreements in writing now? Do we have proof that that's happened or will we have assurances that that's happened? Are you talking about with respect to St. Mary's or with respect to the university? Both, yeah. Um, I believe they, we can, we would require that as part of the developer's agreement, so um, that they would provide that proof come. of those. Okay. So I can't say for sure if they have them done. I, I don't believe the university one is done yet. Okay. I can't say for sure about St. Mary's. Okay, but at the developer's agreement, part is one we'll know for sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I, I mean, it says here, an agreement shall be provided that indicates the parking on St. Mary's is available for use. But personally, I would like to see that be a multi-year agreement, perhaps a 25-year lease or something of that nature, so that there's, it's not about the parking's available this year and all of a sudden it's not available in a future year. Any other questions or things that we want specifically addressed in this? We have one person who's asked to speak, and so Mr. Anderson, if you'd like to come to the front. Hello, my name's David Anderson. I live at 295 Division Street. Um, my main point tonight is I want to bring up some concerns, uh, primarily for the previous Kallenbach properties. That um, so this is yeah. not this one. Then. No, that's. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you were speaking to this. No, no, one. this is. Okay, so Saint you Augie's, should have spoken. Saint to Augie's is another. Okay, so issue, let's but, let's just. I I made a mistake. Okay. So let's have you sit and we'll right. finish up this, and then we'll go back to citizens' comments and let, let you speak about that. Okay. Any other comments on the Saint Augie's development? Is there, um, are there maps uh, of these things that are very difficult to read? Are they in-house in here? Uh, yeah, I would assume that there are bigger drawings of these in-house. Yes, I would assume if you look, if you go to Joe's office, that these have been made small enough for an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. Correct. Right. Because we can't all have these. So I think if you check in Joe's office with uh, Carol or Joe, that you can probably see the bigger drawings. And I suspect that night that uh, they'll have bigger drawings, but if you want to see them before then, that would be. Any other questions, concerns, anything we specifically want addressed? So I guess we had talked a lot about how the building will look, right, and how we want it to look extra nice or make sure that it looks really nice and that's part of the reason we wanted to do a PUD is because we'll be able to have more right. conversation on that. We really don't have any information in our packets on appearances. I mean they included a couple pictures of wall sconces but will we get, I guess that's what I'm curious, like this is the site improvement plan, is this the point at which we get to approve the looks of this building? building. Yes. Uh, okay, so when when the folks were here uh, for the plan commission, they had specific um, samples of of the uh, brick and pre-manufactured stone and and the EIFS um, facades and actual color samples of what they're proposing to go along with the drawings that you see here in your packet. So, so those were available for the plan commission to, uh, to review and, and everything. I will 
Um, and, and they will be making a similar presentation on the 28th for you. Okay. Yep. So, so we will have the same conversation. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Don? Don? No. Ken? Not much to discuss until we get the presentation, gotcha. I guess. That's yeah. probably true. Okay. Mr. Anderson? We will move back to citizens' comments, observations, and petitions. And my apologies for thinking this was the same thing. So you're talking about Division Street properties and uh, the former Kallenbach property, which was at what? Well, what I is believe it right next to you? I believe the one was at 255. But um, okay. my issue is I, I realize that a lot of these other bigger projects that are going on, a lot of the variances are being... Um, I don't think handled very well, but, and my biggest thing with the Kalmbach properties, I don't think anybody in this city was allowed to buy any of them. I think they all went to outside entities, like the two on our street, and the one next to me was in that shape since, I left for Afghanistan in 2012, and it was, looked just the way it did it last week. And I wanted to get it, tear it down, make part of my yard, I was not allowed to do that, um, right now, I've got almost Olympic-sized swimming pool in the yard next to me, and to my knowledge, there's not a building permit or plans for that property yet. And if they're going outside the building areas, it's in a residential area, am I going to know of any variances because it's going to affect the value of my property? Exactly. So, and that's that's the major concern right now is. They had a year to start working on this stuff. It's been almost two years before they've even touched the stuff. Okay. And I think that at the end of the year, things should have been changed to where other people had the opportunity to do something with them because it's, it's, I don't think it's been handled very well. Okay. We do have an upcoming report on the Kallenbach properties. And in the meantime, I'll ask the city manager to uh, check, and Joe is not here tonight. Uh, and he would be the one handling that. Right. But to be. I, I know in, there's been inquiries on them and nobody's really got a straight answer to this point. So by okay. other neighbors. And so I just want to bring it up. Uh, let's oh. say the industrial areas, the hotel and the mm -hmm. St. Augie's right. and stuff like that. I'm not crazy about the way they're handled, but that's not inside a residential area. This is actually inside the residential historic area. Okay. And I think we have the right to have at least a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Okay. And because we'll, it's going to affect our property. We'll see that we'll work with you to get a straight okay. answer. All right. Thank you. Okay. There's another property up the street. Yeah, there were two on division. Yeah. And so okay. we will check on both. We will check on both. Right. All right. And again, I apologize for miss having you. Missed you in the first go round. All right. Uh, con uh, B under information and discussion contract 1016 thin overlay. And Howard, I think this one is actually yours. Yes. Um, this is what we've been doing for a number of years now. Um, uh, we've allocated a bunch of money towards, uh, towards our street maintenance, and this is our uh, thin overlay. Um, uh, we believe that. Uh, uh, that the uh, the price is about the same as last year, maybe slightly less, and we're uh, I had uh, specifically asked for a bid, which I thought would have come over our two hundred thousand dollars, hoping that oil prices would have cut it back underneath or brought it back underneath two hundred thousand. So what we're saying is we're recommending eliminating the last three streets on the on the list of of streets, um, you've got the list of what uh, we're recommending, and uh, and then there's the solid line and the three that we're not recommending this this year. That would be Lincoln Street, Grant Street between Lincoln and May, and Washington between Camp and Madison. Uh, the other streets would be um, uh, we would do an overlay on. And I also have the map that shows where those streets are as well. Um, What's the, I, and I can't 
do you know what the mileage is or total length? Um, I don't know right off the top of my head. I would have to look at all of that. Um, I would say it looks to be about two miles. Um, probably, yeah. Okay. Do the people on these streets get notified? Um, not specifically. Um, this is available, you know, on our website and stuff like that. Put it like on that. the website, and of course, it could mm. be in the paper. Um, but yeah, and then as we get close to actually doing the project, um, we'll end up putting signs up for no parking and things like that. It goes real quickly. Um, they they get it done. Okay, anybody with questions on the thin overlay project? Don? What would be the uh, completion date? Uh, I'm looking uh, the month of July. Any other questions? All right, the next thing on the agenda is the com compliance maintenance annual report. Is this actually for 2000? For last year, 2015. Yes. Uh, I think this is yours too, Howard. Correct. Um, the compliance maintenance annual report is one that we do every year. It's a self-report for our wastewater treatment plant and uh, all associated factors that go along with it. Um, our wastewater plant is in excellent condition, operated by a very experienced staff three of our four operators each have over 30 years of experience. Um, our system is uh, graded an A in all areas for 2015. So um, at this point, there's an enclosed resolution that is required by the DNR to demonstrate that you folks have reviewed and approved the submission, and it has to be done by the end of June. And so everybody needs to read the compliance manual by next meeting so that we can do that. Any questions on the uh, water and sewer compliance report? I couldn't make the meeting yesterday. I was going to ask. Um, I uh, became familiar with uh, some of the water and sewer conditions uh, early 70s. And we had overflows at the plant. An overflow went into the round tree. When was the last uh, time that an overflow went into the round tree, and has that been uh, omitted? Not omitted, but uh, solved. I think it has. Um, we built it's, another thing. It's been quite a number of years. I can't recall right off the top of my head. It's been five or more years, as I recall. Um, we've solved it in a number of ways um, through our cross-connection program to keep uh, sump pumps from dumping into uh, the sanitary sewer system. We've uh, done our projects to tighten up the sanitary sewer collection system so that the groundwater and creek water can't get into the pipes. Uh, and then we also have procedures down at the wastewater plant where if, if it does look like it may overflow, they have procedures to uh, either hold up the water or, or uh, put the water into a holding tank uh, until, until it can be done. I mean, you know, as, as Noah found out, God can bring more water than we can take away, but, um, <laughs> but well, for now, on. for now, we're, you know, we're doing well. We have not had an overflow in our system in quite a long time. And I, I'm sure it helps that we have also installed more stormwater sewer, stormwater uh, piping and, and, and done some additional uh, the, groundwater diversion. The, those, those two systems are totally separate. Um, and what, we're, what we try to do is, like I said, we try to tighten up our sanitary system so that we don't have the storm water going into the system and over the number of years we've we've had been very successful at doing that 
Any other questions on the compliance manual? Otherwise, we're going to move on to staff assistance for the Round Tree Branch Trail. Uh, Karen? I'll give a quick introduction to the Sunjean if you want to say a few words, you can. Um, so with respect to the Round Tree Branch Trail, um, uh, the city's been a partner in that project, which is being uh, primarily handled by the Platteville Community Arboretum. And they've requested some in-kind assistance, primarily in the form of staff time and equipment for some things that they've encountered that either weren't included as part of the bid process or there are items that just aren't, can't reasonably be handled uh, by volunteers. And one example was uh, last, last month, I think it was, when we helped, uh, we had some city crews that helped um, clear some debris behind the Culver's area that had been left over from the tornado to sort of pave the way, so to speak, for the, the trail. Um, another request that they know they're gonna be making is with respect to signage. They, they wanna have some signage along uh, with the gardens and, and plantings and the city sign shop. That would be something that we could potentially handle. Um, it, this may ultimately benefit us because uh, we also are, uh, have the contingency dollars for this project. So to the extent that we are able to provide some of these services and they don't have to contract them out, um, then we don't have to potentially dip into that contingency pot. Uh, with that said, there'll be limits to what city staff can do um, and because we've got our, our primary duties as well. So um, we'll be, uh, we would be working with Gene um, in terms to see if it's something we could reasonably accomplish or not reasonably accomplish given our other priorities. And so we were really just looking for uh, council direction on this, if, if, if they generally approve of this and they wanna give us a direction to, to be able to have the flexibility to potentially offer some of this assistance okay. when, when re or respond to, I guess, requests for some of the assistance. I have a question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, second paragraph, um, maybe I missed this. It says this, this in-kind assistance may prevent the PCA from using a contingency fund. So in other words, is this saying that what the city gives in the way of uh, help will be counteracting, not counteracting, but offsetting the use of contingency? Is that what that mean? Mm -hmm. Possibly, it really depends on how the finance, and I'll let Jean speak to this, but my understanding is it depends on how the finances for the trail as a whole come out. Uh, but to the extent that we're not, you know, that we, they don't have to pay for things, um, then, then that makes their budget dollars go further and that means they're less likely to have to use those contingency dollars. The important thing is that we're the ones that are providing the contingency dollars, are, so that saves correct. the city money. Correct. Yeah, we provided the contingency dollars, and I think they're getting close to having a kind of a better read on their budget. Um, they were expecting something, I think, towards the latter end of this month, but Jean can probably speak to that more eloquently than I can. Uh, uh, Karen, would yep. it be wrong for me to say that if PCA had to contract for the signs, they would have to pay X amount of dollars? If we do it, and that may have to come from the contingency because that may cause them to go over budget. If we help with that, then they don't have to spend those dollars. Correct. That's but, what but, it, but it says here that this is funds committed by the city. Right. Y yes. The, there, there's the, the, the PCA uh, budget for the trail, which the city but, contributed to, but then we also had a motion that provided some contingency dollars in the event that the project went over budget because so, they didn't have much flex in that budget. And as you know, with any major construction project, you encounter um, things that you didn't plan for, so. So we may not have to use our contingency because we're gonna be using our money to do the fix up. Right. We would be providing some staff assistance and yeah. equipment, yeah. yep. Yep. Okay, uh, any other question from the council right now? Otherwise, Gene Weber who is staff assistant, assistant for the Roundtree Branch Trail, <laughs> has asked to speak. Good evening, and my name is Gene Weber, and I live at 1285 Union Street, and I'm here representing the uh, Moving Platteville Outdoors Paving and Lighting Group. Now, Ken, as I go through this, um, I think it may be able to shed a little light on some of your questions here. 
Uh, but first and foremost, I want to again thank the Council for encouraging the MPO collaboration initially. Also, the $285,000 trail contribution that you have made and the recent very short lead response to helping our eight to 10 person senior forestry removal team, um, helping remove the down timber behind Culver's and Melio's area, avoiding a $10,000 cost. Your encouragement resulted in MPO helping raise five sixteenths of the trail funding needed. And uh, it's probably worthwhile commenting that PCA also committed up to $2,500 per year for future paving maintenance. As I believe you may be well aware of, we have instituted a cost control effort um, uh, primarily um, because simply it's good project management to attempt to effectively control costs from the front to the end of a project. And at the end, from my experience in industry, is where you need to watch it most. Um, uh, so we have instituted a cost control effort with our trail providers and established a 25-person social maintenance committee where people have committed two hours per week on an ongoing basis uh, uh, to help us assure long-term care um, of our community for the nearly $1.7 million trail investment we have all made together. Um, these 25 people are not only removing invasives along the trail and doing plantings, but they are also assembling benches, putting in fences, assembling kiosks, installing kiosks. Um, they'll be putting in a brick path and they'll be putting in a couple landscaped entrance areas, one at Delta 3 uh, and one at the Menards uh, opposite end. Uh, so there is a lot of cost control attempts going on here uh, to help potentially avoid using the city's $50,000 contingency. Yeah, $50, contingency. That in no way is a guarantee, but we're putting forth that effort to accomplish that to the best of our ability. Uh, to avoid costs, many of our original donors have continued to reach out to us proactively seeking ways. And part of the reason I'm here tonight is to talk about how we can all maybe proactively seek ways to help us reduce and control costs by providing more in-kind donations of materials and services. Examples include Eastman Cartwright, J.N. Stone, Rural Construction, Myron Trannel, Leon Neuheisel, the School District, the Optimists, and many others. We have actually had donors offer and sell equipment for trail funding uh, to help and to help us negotiate ne needed materials. Joe Jewison is one of those people. We have gone to many individuals and businesses like Digman Construction, Scott Implement, J.N. Stone, Myron Trannel, Schaefer Construction, et cetera, to borrow equipment. Uh, this week, we will yet again borrow Trannel's skid steer and take it to Scott Implements to have him attach his auger for digging post holes for kiosks and fences. Keith Schaefer just today uh, promised he would deliver his portable generator to help us in fence building. Along with all those efforts coming from the community have come a few questions that you might um, help us answer, and that's the real purpose that I am here. To save cost, could the city provide in kind the signs that the trail will need and that the city has good capability of providing? And I want to just pass these two down the line. Uh, these are examples of what the city currently does, and it is consistent with what is done in state parks uh, throughout Wisconsin. Um, just as we, the trail providers, the volunteers, the donors, etc., 
are stretching a bit more to keep this project under budget and on time, could the city council possibly become a bit more proactive by, off, by authorizing their city administrators to offer, as for example, their machine equipped with an auger and manned by a city employee to dig a few holes for future kiosk installation and planting of trees. We've got eight kiosks that we uh, need to um, install. We can only do that after the paving is completed in certain sections, so it'll be a step-by-step -step process. Um, we would like to suggest you give your public officials authorization to make common sense decisions to encourage many, many more collaborated efforts like this, far above and beyond the trail project itself. Authorization leeway to make decisions on similar type but yet unknown requests that may come from projects like our trail projects. Requests that PCA could make to a key city contact and work out an agreeable timetable to accomplish it. Sometimes you're gonna have to say no. Sometimes you may be in a position to say yes. Um, clearly, our many community volunteer project managers have the skills and the contacts, contacts to avoid having to come to the city and wait for the city council to make small, small dollar decisions that they believe city administrators should have the authorizations to do so. Um, I think you have, if you have watched this trail project throughout, I, I think you have seen that any time an obstacle comes up, our people find a way to get it done. And I hope you have seen that demonstrated time and again. Uh, but the question remains, will they continue to offer this kind of project management leaderships for other projects over time on other city or community collaborative um, uh, projects? I would encourage you to evaluate this approach and do what you think is best for Platteville in the future. I want to remind you that back in 2012, you initiated and encouraged the initial trail collaboration with a $50,000 commitment, if we would match that $50,000. And that, I believe, has led to a project that you as the city council and the city is very pleased with when you compare it to what other cities have done where the city has been responsible for 100% instead of one-sixth. Continue to be proactive and encourage collaboration by continuing to model what you would like to see community, community volunteers and businesses continue to do. Let's keep it going. Hey, thank you very much for your time. Any questions? Have a good questions? evening. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Christine. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments relative to? this item otherwise I think we've reached the end of our published agenda here as far as um, so so uh, are you giving staff direction then to uh, do, do you want us to take action on this tonight just I don't know if it needs formal action but we at least need a consensus or direction to give staff the latitude to to okay. proceed well uh, um, does anybody have a comment on that well, my first question is, is it going to be mainly the street department providing the assistance in kind? I would anticipate that that would be the case, yes. Mostly street department, maybe a little bit of parks, but yeah. I'm assuming, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ken, keep going. And then, so what do I say when we have potholes not filled? I mean, that's part of the balancing act that we're going to have to do as we get these requests to determine if it's going to cause a major disruption to 
to our ongoing maintenance what activities. What I'm saying is we need to get done our services <coughs> to begin with. Uh, that's why my my belief is that the request should be funneled through the city manager and then I mean that's why we have a city manager is so that that person can manage and uh, help make those decisions I mean she's got a leadership team and they would have to then to me that's better than uh, that that would be the uh, best scenario is that any request would go through city administration, the city manager. I'm assuming staff at the administrative level are comfortable with this, otherwise it wouldn't have made it this far? Or y Yes, I mean, I, I do think this is a tremendous project. And as Jean said, there's a lot of people pitching in. Ultimately, there are some things that their volunteers just can't do. And we're a natural partner to assist with that. And there is a financial implication to us if, if they do go over budget. But, but primarily, it's, it's a big community project. Um, so, so we do have to do some balancing with these requests. And as Jean said, there's going to be times when we may have to say no because we're in the middle of, of some, some work that, that has to get done. Um, but where we can accommodate the request, um, we, we think it's a good idea to do it. So personally, I... Um think that the trail as it's getting paved and the lighting's going up is amazing to see. It's really beautiful and I've had a few people now comment to me that they're <clears throat> surprised that Platteville has such an awesome trail system. So from a standpoint of economic development and community building, I think that this trail is incredibly valuable to us and it's come at a relatively low cost because the PCA has done most of the work. So if these are ways that we can help, I think that that we should be able to help in these ways because it is important just as important as filling potholes it's really amazing to be able to have a trail system and it will help attract attract people to live in our community i think other comments don anything i trust that the uh, city manager can and staff can prioritize the needs so say a storm like tonight if that were to do something we won't be working on the trail tomorrow if something is needed in the city so okay. Tom? I agree and any more comments uh, question um, how is the maintenance of City Hall handled at the present time is that used to be the street department coming and doing the work some of it uh, what's when we used to have years ago it's, we had a person that was assigned to work in City Hall as far as maintenance so what happens now it's a mix of things um, my assistant uh, in in the office here does a, a lot of the things himself um, uh, when he does not have the uh, capacity to do some of these things he brings in help from either the street department or from uh, outside professional contractors and how about the library is who does maintenance at the library that same thing part of it too that's all part of it uh city hall police department library senior center and the uh, museum does pretty much their own they pretty much do their own but they've been uh, uh, requesting more assistance from us uh, for different items and so we've been accommodating that that's one of the things that i'll be working with the city manager at budget time so you have a number of things that way. You have a number of needs to weigh as far as what Correct. you're going to offer. Yes. Amy, you, yeah. Catherine, I'm in support of city manager and um, staff making decisions based on what we can do to help the trail. I think we have pretty much consensus then that uh, requests should be funneled through you and. Uh, them to staff and prioritized. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments on this? Otherwise, I think we're done with our agenda items. The only other item that we have posted is a work session on stormwater management. And so at this point in time, I believe that we'll adjourn uh, this portion of the meeting and then uh, either proceed or not proceed with stormwater management discussion 
based on the storm. <laughs> there is no storm. There's no storm. So we'll proceed with the stormwater management discussion. Thank you.